All right, let's get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are All Spice, a Harvard collaboration platform inspired by software, software principles. Um, just to get started, kick things off a little bit about us, welcome you everyone, um, a short intro about what we are doing. Uh, first, who is behind the curtain? My name is Valentina. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Allspice. I'm a former Amazon PM and I worked on infrastructure projects and internal productivity software. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by training and I met Kyle in grad school back in 2018. Um, and that's how Allspice came to be. And my name is Kyle. My background's in electrical engineering. I did product development for about 10 years, uh, primarily in consumer electronics, but also some more bespoke uh, uh, industrial products as well. So uh, excited to talk to you all today. So why do we care? Um, because hardware development nowadays still has a lot of room for improvement. Um, as hardware engineers ourselves, we've seen the problem and experience it, and um, we see the software ecosystem and how advanced it is, and it's just night and day, and there's a lot to catch up for. Um, the process, it's very convoluted, takes a lot of steps, imports and exports, emails, PDFs, uh, like an average of three weeks to go from you're done with your design until you can actually order something, um, lots of paperwork and non-value add tasks. And as engineers ourselves, like that's a waste of time and resources and we want to enable teams to kind of move to the next level. So what do we envision? We envision a world where you can develop hardware with the ease and speed of software. A DevOps-like ecosystem that it's based in data transparency and automation and that it enables teams to do agile design. Um, so our approach with Allspice is a Git platform that's made for hardware and it's based on software uh, development principles that have been proven. The platform right now has two components. There's the revision control side, which is a place to document, track, and categorize your designs all the way from idea to production so that you don't have to wait until your design is fully vetted and committed for you to put it somewhere and keep it all tidy. Um, and then the collaboration side, which is a web uh, based platform where you can manage team interactions and uh, kind of bring the process together with both your uh, stakeholders within your electrical team and also external people like mechanical software firmware and product. But why Git? That's a, co a common question we get. And there are probably a ton of benefits that I could go through, but I narrow it down to kind of the four that jump out to us. And the first one is that it aligns with software. Uh, it's a well-tested and documented system and allows you to um, develop side by side with software teams and firmware teams. It helps teams iterate faster. It kind of brings the full power of modular feature-driven design workflows, issues, merge requests, releases, milestones. Um, it's integrated and customizable. It allows you to access your design data in common software languages, build any extensions and automations, um, automated tasks that you will want. And it's also very easy to adapt, yet scalable. Uh, it doesn't take months to implement. You can get started in a few minutes and you can get utility early on from the first day as a single user. And it can grow with you as well as your company um, and your team grows too. And also because we're engineers and we like data, this is the trends, how they look, Git versus SVN. Right now we're at 40 to one uh, when you look at the present day. So with that little intro, just to kind of set the stage, we'll jump straight into the fun part, which is the demo. Uh, Kyle is going to lead this. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll read through those and answer them. Um, we can also answer them at the end. And if whatever, we don't get to it today, we'll make sure to follow back with you over email. Hey everyone. Yeah, so jumping right in uh, here, you can see we have an electronics design project. Uh, what we're looking at is, uh, in this case, an all-team design project. I have the schematics and PCB designs, uh, as well as my project documents. Uh, what I'm going to do here is show you how to basically uh, review, commit, and then push those changes to a remote server. Uh, you can see this project has already been set up with Git. You can see the Git uh, subdirectory here, which has all the Git metadata. Uh, so if I've already made some changes to my design, uh, in this case, I added some ESD protection on some of my input connectors. 
what I can do is I can jump in and uh, commit that to my develop branch. We'll talk about branches a little bit more later, but our general recommendation is that you have a main branch and a develop branch. Your main branch is generally for designs have been reviewed and are ready for production. And your develop branch is more work in progress uh, designs. So what I'm using here is a tool called Tortoise Git. Uh, this is one of many Git clients, which makes it a little bit easier to use Git on your local file system. Uh, of course, you can use uh, Git Bash or Terminal if you're uh, comfortable with that as well. Uh, but I find it generally, especially for presentations, it's a little easier to use something that wraps a user interface around it. Um, so what I can do is uh, I've already installed Allspice diff tool locally here. Um, this is a tool that's free on our website uh, for download and it connects with your local Git system. In this case, I can take a look at my uh, schematic and PCB files to see what has changed before I actually commit them to even my local branch. So in this case, you can see uh, the schematic design. Uh, we show basically green components that have been added, yellow components, uh, and objects have been modified, and that could be either moved or some other metadata. And then we have uh, red components, which there are none in this, but we'll uh, give you an example later, uh, that have been deleted in this design. Uh, in this case, I've added these uh, ESD diodes and then moved the components to make some room for them. Uh, you can also see that that metadata on the right where we're showing the ref des and some of the uh, component description um, is also uh, linked to the design. Might be hard to see in the preview, um, but there, there's a, a nice little connection animation that we show as well. Uh, jumping over to the PCB side, you can see those same designs which were added in these schematics um, are also added now in the PCB uh, with also highlighted in green. And as those deleted traces here, you can see which were uh, making room for the component added down below, uh, highlighted in red. No other major changes in this design. So it all looks good. We will uh, commit that now to our local develop branch uh, with something like uh, ESD uh, ESD components added to protect uh, and stop connectors. Uh, commit messages are actually required in Git, uh, but it's also really good practice to, to spend some time to make a good commit message, which really describes the change that you're making. So once I'm happy with this, I can uh, commit that. Uh, what this does is it actually commits it to only my local branch. So this hasn't been yet pushed to the server. Um, in Git, these are uh, two disconnected steps. The reason being, uh, if you want to take a look locally at the change that's been made in more depth um, before you push it to the remote. In this case, um, I could hit push here on the left and that will push it straight up, but I'll show you exactly what I mean by that with the um, Git log where I can see that entire history locally. In this case, I can see that develop change, which I just committed. And I can right click and say now push that to the remote server, um, which is actually where I will pass it off to Valentina to take a look at the um, Allspace Hub web interface. else having issues with with audio um feel free to let us know in the chat we just had one call all right to keep going um we'll jump into um all spice hub so you just uh finish the local changes on your computer and your design your cat tool and if you haven't already, what you will do is you will go in and log in into your Allspice account. You can create your own credentials or you can use uh, GitHub or Bitbucket authenticators to manage um, permissions for you. Um, so here I'm gonna sign in into mine. The first screen you will see is your dashboard. Um, think of it as an activity feed. It will show you anything that's just happened recently and you will see your repos on the right. Um, so here I'm gonna click on a demo project that was set up for you for today. And when you go in, um, the first thing you will see is your file history and your, and your, pro and your project. Uh, if you're used to using Git or other software development tools, this is gonna 
feel and look very familiar. That is exactly the point. That's her goal to make it intuitive, make it easy to adopt and easy to kind of get going right off the bat. Um, so once you are in your files, um, if you ever needed to look at anything, you could um, click on the files. This one's like the PCB that I have on my project. Um, if you ever wanted to look also at a schematic, you can do the same, um, just kind of a quick view access. Also in your files, you have your commit history. So this is where the rep control comes in. Um, so these are the recent uh, changes. Cal has made a couple of them um, and it will show the commit message that he was talking about earlier. You also have your branches and then any tags as well. So um, going back to kind of the use case we were talking about, um, if you just made the changes, let's say this is a pre-production release and you're ready to order this unit. Um, but before you do that, you wanna uh, have a design review and get input from your coworkers, um, a couple of other EEs, maybe some ME, someone in software or product as well. So what you will do is you will go and create a design review. A design review, it's an analogy for software, it will be a pull request or a merge request. And in a design review, um, the first thing you will do is add any comments. So this is uh, Kyle's design review, he is the EE in the team. Um, he entered any info. Um, this is all Markdown supported, so you can format it um, however you wish. You can add screenshots, files, um, attach it to issues as well. And once you put all the information and it looks good to you, if you want to add reviewers, you will add them here. So let's say um, he wants John to be a reviewer as well. Um, you can put any labels. And we pre-populate some hardware-specific labels. Um, but you're also welcome to create and modify them and make them your own, um, depending on how your company tracks and uses um, different releases and milestones. You can attach milestones, link into milestones, and then you can assign it to people as well. You can also require approval or not before you merge. Uh, traditionally in software, you're not required approval before you can merge, but if you have more strict policies for um, kind of um, approvals and revisions and controls, you can change that as well. So. When you create a design review, the other thing you will do, uh, you will get is um, in the files change, the diffs and the updates that um, happened since your last revision. So here in the PCB, uh, it's showing you uh, some parts have been added, some things have been deleted. You also have any changes to the BOM or the build material. Um, if I format it to look nicer, um, so it's showing me these components have been removed, these components have been added, and the same for the schematic as well. So when you add um, people to the design review, they will get access to all of this, and they can go and um, ask any questions, tag anyone else, kind of have a conversation back and forth until you find all the things you want to address and you address them uh, to close the loop. So let's say Kyle has a question for me. He's the EE, I'm the ME. He selected a little area here, tag me on it, and it's asking me a question about my mountain points. We will go back and forth with this conversation until basically everything is closed down. It's worth noting that this is also closing an issue. So it says clear here closes number three. So three here is an issue that Cal had opened earlier. Um, best practice is to have one issue per design review, but also we know that uh, some people kind of like to compile multiple issues or changes before you run a, a larger design review. So you can link um, everything that goes together. Um, this will contain also the information of the problem. Very helpful for documentation if you're doing um, ECLs or engineering change orders or notices and you need to keep track of updates, especially if you're uh, managing vendors or uh, external partners. This is helpful for that. And it has a similar structure to a design review where you can also put labels, milestones, and assign it to people. Um, so going back to the design review, let's say we've gone through everything, all the notes are in there, um, address all the problems, solve anything that needed to be solved. The last step will be to um, go and from the files change, you will either request more changes, comment or approve the design review. So let's say this one looks good to me. Um, I'm gonna say all oh, logs good. And I will go ahead and approve this design review. Once you approve a design review, uh, the next step is to merge it to your main branch. So as Kyle was mentioning, we recommend a dual branch structure 
with a develop branch where your day-to-day -day work happens and a main branch where you put your approved design and releases. So this one has been approved, everything looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and merge it. And after your design review has been merged, the last step or the last thing you can do is um, create a release. So releases are helpful if you um, want to create different levels of permissions. So you want someone to only have visibility to um, the approved versions rather than the work in progress, or if you need to share it with external partners. Um, when you create a new release, by default, this will create it on the um, main branch at the latest version, but you could add it, um, you, could, you could do it at older um, point in time from your local um, Git clients as well. So let's say this is a pre-production release, and then I will add an info here about my release. Um, this is where you would put any um, manufacturing um, or production outputs. If you, let's say, um, you have technicians that you want them not to um, have full visibility into the history and the work in progress, but you want them to have access to uh, certain outputs, this is where you will include it. You will attach any files. You can manage the permissions for different groups and create groups with different characteristics. And the last step will be to publish the release. So this release will be um, at right now at the main version at the latest point. So with that, um, that's a good overview of one of kind of the use cases for the workflow. We are going to jump back into the deck and uh, answer any questions that you're posting. I see a couple of them coming in. Um, I'll start with a few frequently asked questions. We'll calibrate through those and kind of show you um, some of the answers to what we hear most often. Yeah. First question that we hear, um, how, what are some of the example use cases? How are people using this? Um, we pick also our four favorite ones or the most frequent ones that we hear. And one of them is hosting digital asynchronous design reviews. Um, one of the problems we heard from users very often was kind of the delay in having to find a time when everyone's calendars, make sure that everyone's free, book a meeting room, or right now a Zoom room or whatever it is your process and getting everyone in the same place, uh, preparing the package in advance, making sure that and making it at the same time uh, was basically taking them like about two to three weeks to get this done. So by doing it asynchronously on a digital platform, you can basically do it at any point. It speeds up the process and everyone can comment the input at their own uh, time. The other use case is uh, for organizing documentation with Markdown and integrated wikis. Um, the other thing we heard often is people having these conversations happening in email chains or text messages or in person. And then all of that design intent, information and context gets lost, so especially if that person leaves the company, changes teams, like it's been too long and you don't remember anymore. So keeping track of these things um, in a standard format like Markdown, um, you can integrate it with your company wiki. It makes it a lot easier to put together documentation and troubleshoot things when problems happen at a later point. Other two are um, sharing desk with external stakeholders. So we were talking about the releases um, and being able to set different permissions and having basically the outputs leave with your um, revision history separate, but in the same place, um, and then sharing it with stakeholders. So here's an example of um, a package that you will put together if you want, um, let's say you have technicians group and you, they are asking you what has changed between Grab 2.0 and 2.1, um, you can select the commits that you want to compare, we will create this package, and this is a URL that you can share with them so that they get the full information but, uh, on, on that. And then um, another use case is connecting firmware with electronics revisions through sub modules because it's Git back end and based. It allows you to basically revision and tag the specific um, firmware revs, which probably it's in GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket to your hardware revision so you know what firmware is running in which revisions of your electronics. Um, another question we hear often is, can I use branches? Because some of the principles of Git are doing branching and merging and tagging and releasing and all these things. Um, 
yes, if you adjust your workflow. So um, we recommend this kind of dual branch structure where you have a developed branch, which happens your um, work in progress, your everyday work, and then you merge it to a main branch through a design release a design review, which can be required approval or not, depending on your company process. And then um, bonus points, if you want to tag or identify your official release uh, releases with tags that you can create releases and packages to share externally. The other question we hear often, which I think came up in the in the chat already is, can you merge ICAT files? Unfortunately, no, uh, at least not yet that we know of. Um, there's too much complexity and dependencies for you to allow it. That maybe someday where it was helpful. Um, and to be... fully answer the question too that uh, also was asked in the chat, um, the ECAD files themselves cannot be merged. If two of the same files have been uh, been changed, um, you're going to see conflicts just like you would see in the software space. Um, and those conflicts would have to be resolved manually. Essentially, you have to open up both designs, make sure that the the changes from both are uh, are propagated in the new version and then commit that if there are conflicts. Um, that's why we're recommending that two branch structure, the uh, main and then develop. Uh, if there are not commits going directly to that main branch, you should never run into those conflicts. Um, this is also kind of reflected by the, the video that you see on, on the right here, where we have that develop branch uh, with changes moving on, and then those changes being propagated out. Um, we would like to, to basically um, support more advanced branching structures that may be more software analogous in, in the future as well, um, but TBD on that. Okay, so there's also um, so some other ways we're helping the Git ecosystem or Git infrastructure around hardware designs are adding uh, adding things like uh, Git ignore templates, um, for instance, with Allspice Hub, but also available in in our blogs. If you go click through that, um, you'll be able to find example uh, Git ignore files, and this essentially tells Git which files and directories to ignore by default. Uh, essentially, anything that's generated locally, we're adding to those files so that it doesn't uh, doesn't clutter up your um, your repositories. Uh, we also get questions around uh, monorepo. Monorepo being essentially having all of your designs in one repository. So uh, multiple PCBAs generally in one, um, one repository. We recommend separating those out, doing one repository per PCBA. Uh, in by doing so, you can control access better. You can make those designs themselves much more, much more agile, um, share them and clone them individually. Um, pulling uh, versus in a mono repo, um, anytime you clone with Git, you're actually um, cloning out the entire design history by default. Um, we can talk about some methods to um, to basically change that default behavior, but um, this is this is what makes it problematic to include absolutely everything in a single repository. Is it can really increase the size of that um, that repository and make that clone or checkout time um, significantly higher. Uh, so speaking of these large binary files, um, one of the things that people learn very early on with Git is it really was developed first and foremost for text-based files. Um, since the uh, these electronic design files are not yet um, text-based and ASCII, um, there are several features which really were introduced to Git to help mitigate um, mitigate this as, as a problem in any case. Uh, in general, as long as you're not embedding, uh, you know, massive image, like lots of image files or um, embedding content in your schematic or PCB designs, the file sizes are generally um, not going to be an issue for you. Um, if you if you are or you're finding that the repositories are gen uh, generally growing large and making that checkout time slow, um, there are a couple features that uh, can help with this. One is Git LFS, stands for Git Large File uh, File Systems, and this essentially allows uh, 
allows Git to kind of disconnect or disconnect that revision control history from the design file itself. Um, essentially, on the back end, it will handle all of this, uh, separating the design in one location um, from a pointer, which is this little uh, kind of a smaller text file, which points to the uh, design file itself. Um, and then anytime you want to do any of those Git features like diff, compare, it will go check out that file, um, which of course requires an internet connection. So that is one of the downsides. Um, and then compare to the version that you want. Um, and in doing so, you can have this nice fast checkout. You can also get the compares and things like that. Um, the other option you have is even just in your default um, Git setup, you can use blobless clones, which essentially is just a different way of cloning a Git repository, which doesn't clone that uh, entire design history, which, uh, which Git does by default. And that's just going to make that clone step uh, much faster. In a similar way, whenever it needs a previous version, it will go fetch that from the remote and then download it, and then you'll have that available. Um, there's one more benefit to Git LFS that we um, will provide some content in the future around, uh, which is the ability to uh, do lock files uh, because Git understands that if you're doing, you using these uh, large large file binaries that you're probably going to want to be able to lock them down. Um, it can help mitigate the issue of having conflicting files, um, which helps enable multiple users to work on a project simultaneously. Um, and, and that can be that can be a very powerful tool for that. So uh, as you found by now, we are using Git by, um, by default on the back end for, for our file system. Uh, so if you're currently using SVN, there are lots of resources available for migrating and also migrator tools to help out. Um, you know, if this, is, uh, if this is a concern that people have, we recommend you reach out to us. We're more than happy to, to help you through it. Um, but that is generally a, a pretty smooth process these days. Uh, how are we looking on any other, any other questions, Valentina? Yeah, so I'm seeing a couple of questions um, on the chat that I try to answer. And we probably have actually more questions of time today. So if we don't get to them, we will respond to you over email after. Um, a couple of the ones, just general one was, uh, is the recording room available? The answer is yes. We will share it over email and the summary uh, next week. Um, for support, for tools, um, someone asked, I said, um, right now we do Altium Designer. If you have other tools that you use and you want us to prioritize for integrations, let us know. We're always keeping track of those. And um, so the question for on-prem hosting in high security environments. Um, let's let's chat more. Uh, we don't have an available on on-premise hosting um, service. Um, but we do have uh, documentation based on how we've secured our um, our servers, you know, from the ground up. Security really has been like at the forefront of our development, so um, we have plenty to share there. Great, and um, I think we'd add actually we're hitting our thirty minute mark. Um, we want to thank everyone for coming in today. Um, I did get all the questions. We'll make sure to get back to you with anything else that we didn't have time to cover today. Um, thank you all for your support. If you have more notes or comments or want to see more, learn more. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. I'm putting our emails on the chat as well. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to have you today. Enjoy your day.